Welcome, welcome, welcome. So this is a Doom 1, uh, Episode 3, Inferno, uh, level design commentary for maps 9, 7, and 8. So this is the secret map, and it looks exactly like the first map that we played. And I can imagine that this was really surprising for people who are playing the game for the first time in 1993 or whenever the game came out. Yeah, December 1993. Um, because you just haven't seen anything like this before. And um, I think when I discovered this secret, which I didn't discover normally because it requires like sort of a rocket jump to get to, and that's not something I really figured out <laughs> how to do. Um, I thought that maybe it just warped you back to the first level, or, you know, that maybe you were just, like, starting the episode over again, or the progression was doing something strange, you know? Because Doom pretty strictly follows that episodic format, but um, if you're playing the game for the first time, you don't really necessarily know that. I mean, there's so much that was new with Doom. The, the idea that it couldn't just like warp around and break that whole format of, you know, uh, nine levels per episode, um, eight of which are normal and one of which is secret. So um, you don't really know what to expect. I mean, it just seems, it's just deja vu. And I like, of course this map isn't like, you know, it's it's not the the most loved, map of episode one um we're talking if we're talking about map one um hell keep but um but i think it's an interesting idea and you know it, it is a gimmick um but it's an interesting gimmick it's a lot more interesting than uh probably um map nine of episode two which has kind of a, a neat like combat scenario um and then that, that's about it and I just don't like, I don't know what it is, but I just don't like episode one, map nine. I didn't play through it in this, but. So here's the big reveal. You know, this is the normal exit. This map is by Sandy Peterson, by the way. Um, and you find a cyber demon. A cyber demon just in a normal level. Like, you know, by the time that you hit Doom 2, you'll start seeing cyber demons freaking everywhere, especially if you're playing multiplayer. Um, they just randomly will put cyber demons across the map, but um, but here you know it's not something that you expect. It's crazy. It's 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 really like all of a sudden it uh, jumped up in difficulty. So I this would not be considered anticlimactic at all. But I guess by the standards of modern maps, um, people throw in cyber demons everywhere. So. But of course, they give you an invulnerability, and these little uh, cubes, like green marble cubes, are good for breaking up um, for the breaking up the rockets. This is actually a pretty nice little arena for fighting the cyber demon in. So, not a bad little setup here, honestly. Um, that that reveal is a pretty big deal. I mean, like I said, it's not something that you would expect at all if you were playing this game normally. And the actual boss of the the episode. Um, and the invulnerability makes it, you know, makes you able to handle it. But but then, you know, and this is this is where um, things get things get more interesting. Is is you're like, okay, what the hell do I do now? I don't really know what the progression is. So you so you the first thing that would come to your mind uh, normally you would think, okay, I beat the cyber demon. Like, why isn't this ending now? Um, so you go back, and then all these these uh, these places have opened up and they're just revealing more and more enemies and there's some bonus items and stuff but it's really interesting um, and and they do this more in like Sandy Peterson especially does this kind of trickery and progression more in like Doom 2 but um, Doom 1 is a little bit I'm not gonna say like it's because a lot of the levels can be kind of non-linear but it's more straightforward in terms of these kinds of tricks that um, I guess you could say almost break the fourth wall. Like the environments in Doom 1 sort of have more integrity to them. So even when there's like monster closets, it, it feels like oftentimes you're in some sort of place um, and the place isn't just gonna suddenly change um, the moment that you walk over something. And here that's just kind of breaking down. So, you know, for a secret level, that's that's a pretty interesting idea. 
this map, by the way, is called Warrens, which Warrens are like uh, sort of rabbit burrows. Um, and that's, that's kind of what this map feels like, is you're sort of unveiling these little passages or tunnels or things that have opened up. And it, it does make you kind of see um, the first map of the episode interesting, more, you know, uh, in a more interesting light. And, um, you know, maybe adds to some sort of lore um, if you want to go that far. Because, um, like I said, the, the, first, the first level is so abstract, it's kind of hard to, to take what exactly any of it is. Which, of course, f fits with the hell theme, but this, this also adds to the, the theme of, like, things opening up and changing and, and moving around kind of arbitrarily, which, um, you know, like I said, ha that happens more in Doom, uh, Doom 2, but, but it, it starts to happen uh, in the Hell episodes, and, and it makes more sense to me thematically, I think, <laughs> in the Hell episodes in Doom 1 sometimes than it makes sense to me in Doom 2 when you're, like, in a city map or whatever. Um, because everything is textured so crazy and, you know, everything feels so crazy. But uh, here's one of the more interesting parts, because <laughs> you would not, like, th I kind of expected the first time I played this map, um, I'd just go back to the beginning and exit the map. But here it changes, and all of a sudden you teleport to this completely different um, room, and there's, like, a billion shotgunners... Uh, in these like sort of burrows, sort of like warrens, um, and it's it's a pretty it's pretty dicey confrontation if you don't have like you know the necessary ammo to deal with them, which you probably do if you found the BFG. Um, but I, I just like the the way that that it doesn't seem like it makes sense, like that this interior area would connect to this very organic hell area that feels like it's almost like the beginning of this uh, this map in Hell Keep sort of feels like it's on a mountain. So the idea that these kind of almost tech sort of areas would just arbitrarily connect to the side of that um, doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, it kind of breaks your sense of what reality is, which, you know, someone could say that that is an example of bad design or whatever, but I think it works really effectively here, honestly, because you don't expect it. Now, again, like if you're playing, coming in playing modern Doom wads, that's different, but, you know, like, you have to look at it, you have to look at Doom from the perspective of, you know, somebody who's playing it for the first time. Um, and this is an interesting little fight at the end here, you, I mean, you have a few barons, like, just to get this, to pick up this key, so, or wait, no, I think that's a, that is a soul sphere. I honestly didn't remember this map very well because I, I hadn't played through it. But like I said, I think it, it is my favorite secret map of uh, Doom 1. And maybe that's, well, I guess, of Doom 1 and Doom 2 because Doom 2's secret maps are kind of <laughs> uh, a complete gimmick. Um, whereas this is a gimmick that at least has some things behind it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think... It could be executed better by modern standards, but I think this is this is this is what this is what you hope for secret maps to do. You hope for them to do something interesting, and this is the only secret map that doesn't like. I feel like disappoint me in that way, in the way that maybe uh, map nine of episode two and map nine of episode one do. So, all in all, I think it was worthwhile. So now we're coming to uh, Limbo, and Limbo, or otherwise known as Gate to Limbo. This is a really kind of bizarrely intense start. Um, there's actually another another one of those Evolution of the Wad videos that I mentioned in an earlier video, where they were talking about the beginning of maps. And uh, f the strange thing about the start of this map, it just throwing you like in a confrontation like this, is there aren't very many monsters in this map. It's more of an atmospheric map overall. Um, so it's kind of odd that you face like a bunch of monsters right from the get-go, because for the rest of the map, you're not really facing that much. Um, so this map was originally by Tom Hall. And you can sort of tell if you know how to spot his other maps in Doom 2. Um, 
there's more of kind of a consistency of architecture. Um, things are sort of more thematically linked to each other, whereas oftentimes, although not always, in Sandy Peterson maps, it will just be kind of an arbitrary series of rooms, though we've seen in like uh, map two of this episode that that's not true. But I think the most interesting thing about this map, and, and I really do think it's one of the most interesting maps, probably in Doom, um, or at least in episode three, is the primary sort of, your primary enemy is honestly the damaging floor because you have to get across these different floors because you wanna, there's, a, there's key doors in all with, that contain teleporters in all those little central column areas. And you wanna get through them because you wanna activate switches in order to activate a platform that will get you the exit. So it's basically like a puzzle map. And um, this kind of shows the potential for that in Doom. It's not really something that they do very much. And um, it, it, it's kind of disappointing to me. I, I still feel like to this day, um, I haven't seen very many maps that do puzzles well, like, and it's perfectly possible, like, and I know a lot of people are purists about that kind of thing and say Doom is about the combat, but, like, <laughs> you know, it's about the combat and the combat only, but, like, the, the thing is, there's a lot of, like, tricky, kind of puzzly stuff in this game, and, you know, you can't ignore this level, like, the existence of this level, like, and this is what I've said before, one of the most interesting things about Doom is that it contains so many different ideas, oftentimes conflicting and contradictory ones that don't necessarily flow into each other. Um, but there's just this intense variety um, to a lot of the maps, um, and it makes it feel like this really sort of textured world. And I don't think it's perfect, but I think that's what makes... Um, just the, uh, the the amount and the density of the ideas is what makes people still talk about like the level design for, for Doom 1 especially. Um, another thing is like this is there isn't a lot of like texture changing. There's really this green marble and that like red wall uh, texture in the other area and there's a lot of just very open areas which you don't see quite as much like there are long hallways and stuff in Doom um, but you just don't see big big open rooms so much um, but it, it works like it, it's it's um, it doesn't need to be de detailed it's like sort of effective minimalism especially in that first area like it, it it creates a really strong effect I think it's even better when you're playing it with like chocolate doom or the original um, engine like I like I am here because the blue ceiling the the ceiling is like water or lava in the in the first it's it's lava in that room that I was just in and it's water in like the first room and it looks really weird to have that like when you're playing it's maybe in some of the newer ports because you can see the detail of the textures but here um, because it's kind of more hazy it looks sort of more impressionistic um, this is a really nice little secret actually uh, if you had I don't know if this was on the original Doom box art, but I, I owned the Ultimate Doom and that le there was like a screenshot of the secret area on it. And I could never figure out how to get there for the longest time, but um, I'm a little bit more patient now, so it <laughs> wasn't too hard. Um, so this map isn't that complicated uh, when you're talking. There is a lot of sort of running around but you know, if you play like puzzle games or whatever, it's it's not too hard. To, the map isn't that huge, and it's not too hard to suss out what's going on. This is another example of like effective minimalism here. The contrast between the green and uh, the red works and again in this room. These rooms are big. Um, they they feel kind of they do feel very hellish. They feel kind of haunting. The the theme of limbo, which is. Um, this first, I think it's like the first layer of hell in uh, the Divine, Dante's Divine Comedy. It's like where people are waiting. Um, it's sort of an area in between. Um, it, and it feels, it. there's this the very somber sort of quality to this map um, that, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily associate with, with Doom, um, but is totally present. Um, 
Those cacos in the windows are a little weird, but this is an interesting little maze. Um, the lighting is, is pretty good, too. Um, like, the way that this lava area is lit here. Um, and they give you uh, plenty of radiation suits here, thankfully, so even though you could get stuck here. There are a few different exits to the maze, too. I think there's, like, a secret exit, and then there's, like, a normal exit. I'll, I think I'll end up going back through this maze. It was a, a little bit ago that I played through this, so... By the way, <laughs> I apologize for taking so long uh, with doing this video, but... <laughs> uh, I'm kind of sporadic with this stuff. Okay. So this is where you pick up the red key. It wasn't too difficult, but there is a secret, I think. Um... I wanted to make sure that I got all the secrets in this map because I haven't been great about getting all the secrets. I never really prioritized them um, when I played through when I was younger. But um, this is the sort of maze area I think that maybe people would frown upon. If you look at the map, you can see how it's sort of all clumped up in the top part of the map, uh, which is really a lot of the Tom Hall maps are sort of... Uh, shoved into rectangles they're very like i think they're i don't i think they were supposed to look like floor plans um to some degree but yeah this teleports me out here back to a completely opposite side of the map um another feature of doom and uh sandy peterson's maps too is just throwing you at a completely you know throwing putting a teleporter there and throwing you to a completely different side of the map and here's another example that lighting is very consistent with uh, with the lava like uh, the lava pits are lit um, a bit more you know intensely which makes sense I mean it's lava or I guess in, in this case it's blood um, but even the even without very much texture detailing the consistency among this sort of um, the areas that you know you're, you're accessing to open the switches the little column areas with the doors in them and also the way that the lava is sort of laid out around them um, makes it really interesting and it makes it feel like like I was saying the environments have integrity they feel like uh, real places even though there are these kind of strange imaginary places but this maze it's something that you know modern Doom designers might frown upon this kind of maze, but honestly, I don't know. I don't think it's it's too bad. Um, it's not that big of a maze. They give you tons and tons of radiation suits. I suppose if you wandered around long enough, or you could accidentally take all the radiation suits uh, just by you know running over them accidentally. So that could be a little annoying. But um, I think I actually needed to hit that switch, so it's good that I came back. That might have activated uh, actually the the platform in the area that I was just in because I wasn't paying attention. Um, so yeah, now now we're at the part of the map where it's just like it's a matter of going into all those areas. Now that we finally have the red key, um, which we obtained from the end of that maze. Um, and just activating the switches. And I'm not sure what's in the room with the Baron, um, but I'll be heading back there. It's one of my favorite rooms in Doom. I don't really know why. There's only one enemy in it, um, but I'll show you when we get there. This is the exit. Also kind of in an arbitrary place. It's kind of tucked away. You know, there's not a big production about the exit. The exit isn't, you know, in the starting room. Um, it's just kind of one of the obscure little side areas, um, which is interesting. But yeah, this is one of my favorite rooms. I don't really know why. It just has this very like forlorn quality to it, I guess. And the way that the Baron comes down from uh, that wall there, and, <laughs> and like he'll get stuck on the wall and it'll lift back up. I don't know. It just looks really funny to me, and it also is kind of like... It's creepy in a way, but it's creepy through minimalism, which is not something that Doom does a lot. But like I said, um, it's present in Doom. This is in the first version of Doom, <laughs> and it's the, the final normal level, so it's, it's the penultimate level. And honestly, the next level is pretty garbage, so... 
so it's <laughs> it might as well be the final level. It's a very strange final level. Like, episode one has this very clear sort of ramping up. Um, I'm not supposed to be able to 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 go over there, but it's really easy to to do it if you know how to um, SR40, which is like the strafe running, which I don't think they discovered. Um, they, they, I don't think they discovered when the game first came out. It's it was actually a bug, uh, but it's a, a common thing that's used now in just regular Doom levels. SR50 is the sort of more complicated version of it, which is harder to do. Um, there might be a SR30 too. I don't know, but anyway, it's just a fancy word for like strafe, different kinds of strafe running. Um, so yeah, this is the final key, and that's the exit area. Um, I think I need to hit one more switch, and then I'm good. Yeah, yeah, so this goes to the final switch that I need to hit. So I like this little puzzle. Um, <laughs> when I was a kid, I remember I couldn't figure it out just because I didn't have the patience for it, so I thought this level was impossible, and I literally told somebody that this level was impossible. And they're like, no, it's not. You can, be <laughs> you can beat it. And I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, here's the bridge. Uh, you can see me do a little dance. <laughs> and that <laughs> might as well be the final level of Doom. Um, with a lovely teleporter at the end. I always love teleporter exits. I don't know why. I just prefer them to the switches. So that's Limbo, also known as Gate to Limbo. I have no idea why it has two different names. Just some of the levels do. This is Dis, which is, I guess, a city in hell. Maybe the capital city of hell. Um, I think Pandemonium is supposedly the capital of hell in Dante's Inferno. So um, all the interesting levels. <laughs> well, the two most interesting levels are named after Dante Inferno, in my opinion. Uh, this is a really crappy boss level. Um, it's interesting in that the HR sort of Giger textures... Um, the use of those is really cool because we're fighting the cyber demon, so it makes sense that we'd be fighting those. This this marble arena, the fact that it's kind of shaped in this like I guess like clover shape. Um, I guess the idea is you're supposed to kind of wander, run around, and grab more ammo. You don't necessarily have the BFG, and this is the your first time seeing the spider mastermind. If you try and fight him just like head on. You can die pretty quickly, but he's pretty weak, so if you just run around and use some cover, he's not a big deal at all. Um, or she, depending on your interpretation of the Spider Mastermind's gender. Um, but anyway, that's the end of Doom. The loathsome spider demon that masterminded the invasion of the moon bases and caused so much death has had its ass kicked. Okay, so I guess canon, it doesn't have a gender. A hidden doorway opens and you enter. You've proven too tough for hell to contain. And now hell at last plays fair for you emerge from the door to see the green fields of earth home at last. You wonder what's been happening on earth while you were battling evil unleashed. It's good that no one else spawned. <laughs> Sorry about that. I could have come through that door with you. I, it wouldn't be one of these videos without me screwing up and like accidentally showing another window. So here's the infamous scene with the bunny music. We see this nice bunny in a field. We're at, we're on Earth, but oh no. So in the very sort of weird expressionistic uh, painting of a city, the city is burning. Yeah, because everything is sort of like leaning away from you. Um, and poor old bunny. His head is on a stake. Um, so we'll be coming back here in Doom 2. And I will probably be coming back in Doom 2. I hope it doesn't take me three years to do videos, but I can imagine that uh, um, I can find enough to talk to about in a video on Doom 2. So I'll also do Episode 4 eventually, but I'd, I'd probably do Doom 2 first. I might want to do other games as well but i hope you've enjoyed these commentaries i hope that you've gotten something out of them um and yeah just let me know if you want to hear any more um my twitter is at e-l-l-a-g-u-r-o 
This has been Liz Ryerson. Thank you for tuning into these commentaries and have a lovely day.